ready for another great battle. This one, three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of three wins and no losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 66.1 kilograms. Representing KHK MMA and fighting out of the magnificent Kingdom of Bahrain. Give it up, grab Dulatip, Garo, Makamena. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a big martial artist with a professional record of seven wins and two losses. He stands. 175 centimeters tall and weighs already 65.9 kilograms. Representing Fight Club Academy out of Kuwait City, Kuwait. Give it up for Suleiman
This battle ends by Dr. Stoppage as the opponent was unable to go to the second round. For your winner, from KHKMMA and the Kingdom of Bahrain, Abdullah Kip Garou Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 12 wins and three losses. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs already 84.2 kilograms. Representing Team Universal Fighters and fighting out of Dagestan, Russia. Please welcome Abu Supian Ale. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of five wins and two losses. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs already 83.8 kilograms. Representing K Doja Warrior Tribe and fighting out of Fairfield, New Jersey, USA, by way of Russia. Give it up. The Rustam, the Russian bear, Chaziev! Um, Chaziev may be the elder Fight. fighter, but in terms of mixed martial arts, he doesn't have as much time on the clock. That may be an advantage as he may be the fresher fighter, but Kirk, talk to me quickly about just how much of an influence and just how much of an MMA genius Master K is. I want to talk to you quickly, Phil, about what I do believe is going to be the fight of the night, and a huge part of that does, a huge part of the credit for that absolutely does go to Master K, who is an extraordinary grappling coach, and as well, can teach his fighters, look at that, can teach his fighters how to strike, and even more importantly, how to put them together. That is incredible. Incredible strength by the Russian bear into the scarf takedown. Needs to be wary of getting his back taken in this position, but he's such an intelligent grappler. grappler. If I'm aware that he could get his back taken, I am sure Rustam Shiziev is more acutely aware of it than anybody else here. Phil, that was absolutely the greatest expression of technique and of strength that we have seen tonight. Absolutely phenomenal takedown. Now there's going to be a scramble. Good work by Abu Supian to get back up and initiate the break. But Rustam Shazav, he's just got such incredible power in his hands too. Yes, predominantly a grappler, but uses that grappling to get the fight to the ground and invariably finishes with a KO or a TKO finish. Obviously coming from that southpaw stance, his entries into takedowns and clinches are a little bit different, as a southpaw is a rare breed in combat sports. Ironically, the Russian bear just pawing with that jab. That pawing, though, Phil, is very, very useful. What he's trying to do is get reads on the opponent. When he goes wide, what does his opponent do? Where does the hand go? He saw a read, tried to land a shot, and that was a big counter we saw right there. Good thing he pulled back. That would have been a short night for, as I said, what I do believe is going to be the fight of the night. But with every fight that we see Shaziev in, his striking is evolving, is improving. He's becoming a very competent striker as well. It's not just the technical competence of these shots. There's two other things I want to draw attention to. It's that they land with booming power and that he seamlessly puts them together with his takedowns. It's a huge kick to the body again, coming from that southpaw stance. It's a premier kick to the liver. Subian again, just so, so dangerous, as we said, riding a three-fight win streak of his own. Beautiful head movement from the southpaw. Rustam Shasiev. 
invariably what you see when you get two quality grapplers like this. The fight will predominantly play out on the ground, and that's kind of been the story of the fight so far, apart from that one takedown into Scarf from Shazir. Oh, got caught with a shot there. Was trying the overhand left of his own and got caught with a counter lead left, I believe, from Abu Supyan Alekhanov. Brave Nation, watch the lead foot of both these two fighters. Both these fighters want to place their foot just like you saw there on the outside of the other fighter's lead foot. That opens up the center of the body to straight line attacks. It becomes a little bit of a battle, doesn't it, Kiri? Abu Supyan charging forward in the clinch. Attempted foot sweep from Shaziev. There's a little bit of tension in this fight. You feel like anything can and will happen in the next few seconds. Both these fighters, Phil, have extraordinary power in their hands. A single shot, and I, I don't say this by any means about most fighters, a single shot like the one you saw there if it landed cleanly with timing could put the opponent out. Shaziev needs to be careful of dropping his lead hand when he throws that big left overhand. The right hand is dropping ever so slightly. If Abu Supyan becomes aware of that and then throws the likes of an uppercut or a counter hook himself, it may just land. Brave Nation, you saw Abu Supian throwing shots not off his lead side as would be customary, but off his rear side. That's what you have to do when you have mirrored stances to each other. When you have what's called an open stance, that lead hand is no longer as effective, and so you're relying on that rear hand, which is a little harder to land, but hits with a lot more power. A little bit of head fighting going on here. Both these men battling for dominance. Nice little shot on the break. Big shot to the body from Shaziev. Abu Supian, shades of Anderson Silva against Tony the Freak Frickland. His kicks are a little bit new wrinkle, and oh, that was a beautifully tight kick to the inside. Game. Round ends, terrific first round. Legitimately on the edge of my seat during that fight. That's an illustration of how good both these guys are. As I say, when you have two big guys like this in the cage, anything can and will happen. Both throw heavy hands, both are incredible grapplers. They both, Phil, have knockout power potential, and if it happens, it's not going to happen because they're throwing wild shots. It will be planned for, it will be set up, and we may see one of the setups right here on the Green Hill replay. That was a counter left hook from Abasupian. He timed his opponent's movement, and boom, landed that left hand. It did have an effect if he... And there was That's what was absolutely beautiful. the most beautiful, coolest fight, not of the night, but the coolest shot I have seen in a long time. That was beautiful, just ducks under and then pops up with the elbow. As I say, Anderson Silva esque to have the confidence in your striking to do that. It's okay to do that on the pads, but to do that in a fight. Especially when you're a big man of this size. It tells you everything you need to know about Abu Supyan. Second round of a really, really fun, interesting, intriguing bout is underway. Supian stalking. Who's still moving that head? Oh, head kick landed. Abu Supian appears to think he's got a sense of his opponent's timing because he's throwing his punches in bunches now. He's throwing his strikes in bunches. He's not doing single shots. Rustam trying to get in on the takedown. Rushes Abu Supian against the cage. I was just going to say, but when you put too many shots together, it does leave you open to being taken down. He sneaks the leg on the inside, goes back to the side of Abu Supian. Big shots. <laughs> Trying to establish those double underhooks in that 50-50 over-under position, pressed against the cage right now. Rustam working his elbow down, partially negating that underhook. He's got such a tight squeeze, such a tight clamp. He's taking some of his opponent's leverage away. Trying to use that to move his opponent around. While the opponent's trying to regain his footing, he's gonna try and sweep a leg out. Didn't think he saw what he needed. Still pressing. And interestingly, though, this is bread and butter for both men. Nice defense, a nice break from Abu Supyan Alejandro. 
Interestingly, that time when there was a break, it was Abusubian who threw the shots. Previously, it had been Rustam would be coming out very intelligently, coming out of those little scrambles by throwing a shot. Big shot over the top again there. But Rustam Shaziev is a fantastic pressure fighter, whether it be on the feet, and that is twice we have seen that coming off the big overhand from Shaziev. The leg kick time beautifully, sweeping that leg right out from underneath Shaziev. Abusubian has a sense of his opponent's timing now. He has a sense of his footwork. He has a, a sense of the speed with which he comes forward and maybe even a sense of what he's going to attack yet. What you're seeing right here is very intelligent from Rustam. He's changing it up a little bit. He's not coming in with the shots anymore from the outside. He's trying to close, secure a body lock, take it down to the ground where he would be happiest. What I like about the way Shaziev is approaching this, if he initiates the clinch and it gets broken off, he just takes a breath and gets right back in the face of Alicano. Yeah, there it is, a breath, and then right back into it. Chisiev is moving that head continuously, which is very, very wise. If that head stays on the center line, it may be a short night for him. It's caught with a big right hand there, but again. Like a zombie in a George A. Romero movie, he just keeps coming forward. Going down on that wizard, may try and establish an underhook of his own. Interesting test of size, of strength, of leverage, and skill to see who keeps who's back up against the Brave Combat Federation cage. Also of endurance, because Kerry, I know we say this every time, but it's in the hope that maybe a new fan of mixed martial arts is watching. This is the most grueling, taxing, debilitating aspect of mixed martial arts. Being in that 50-50 clinch against the cage, it's, it's, it can be so draining. Indeed, Phil, indeed. When people think of mixed martial arts, they think of it a flying arm, brother. They think of a flying knee, they think of an explosive straight right hand, but sometimes the physiological needs are this, they're barely moving at all. They're the full use of all the strength in the body without movement. Referee wants to see some movement, separates them. I don't think anybody's going to complain, and they're back at it from the outside. Nice kick to the body, but a lovely reply kick to the leg. Oh, trip. Grabbing the leg and then kick in the leg out from underneath Chiziev. Chiziev looking for a switch. Probably going to look for a stand up now, but he Jason. may get some leverage on that switch. He can use it to sweep, to stand, to go behind. And he uses it to stand. Nice work from Chiziev. Had constantly that base. Tried to trip, denied heavy, heavy hips from Alikhanov. What happened there in Brave Nation was, at this stage in the fight, both fighters are very slick with sweat. You can grab an elbow, you think you have the purchase you need to take your opponent down, but it pops out. Nice work. I think that was the an elbow attempted from Chiziev, but the momentum of that brought him right back chest to chest with Alekhanov. Shots landed on the brick. Genuinely fantastic fight so far, Kerry. Both these guys so evenly matched. A little show of respect to one another. All right, there's going to be a big question in both corners. What do you do? If I'm Master K and I'm not a thousandth the coach that he is, I tell his fighter, keep it standing a little bit and then go for that takedown with all you've got. Don't go for it naked right off the bat. You may have to take a shot or two to the head, but try and get him on the ground. What do you say in Abusupian's corner? You have to tell him it's all about anticipating the counter strike. Don't be there when Chiziev throws his shots, but be there quick enough to fire back with your own. There is a beautiful lead left hook that he's thrown a few times. When Chiziev, as I've said, throws the big power left, he leaves himself vulnerable on his right side. There is scope there for the likes of an uppercut coming from the right side of uh, Abu Subian. And as you're speaking, Phil, our, our Green Hill replay is narrating exactly what you're talking about. You do see the space there for that counter to land. Brave Nation, we are just seconds away Absol from getting to the third and final round in this fight. Absolutely razor close so far. I wouldn't even begin to know how to start scoring this fight. All I know is that I am entertained.
Time. Foot. <laughs> Again, that's beautiful timing from Abu Supian. Shuziev standing in front. Now Abu Supian trying to get in on a takedown of his own. Ooh, how heavy are those hips? <laughs> how heavy are those hips? That was ridiculous. They're made out of uranium. I thought it was all over, and it wasn't. Shuziev has to be one of the strongest guys in mixed martial arts. Again, Brave Nation, this is, this is, there are different ways of showing power. You've got the competitions where people lift rocks over their head. This is harder. This is two people's bodies pushing against each other to the depth of their soul with all their muscle fiber. And right now, Rustam Shasiyev seems to be in ascendancy. Now up and again in this position, he's just forcing Ali Kamov to wear his weight, to wear bear the brunt of the pressure he's putting down and it's it's not just gravity pulling down on you it's a russian bear rustam doing a nice job of keeping that head stuffed when the head stuffed the yes. esophagus collapses it's much much harder to breathe potential here to set up the likes of a darser and anaconda given the length of his arms i'm guessing an anaconda is going to be more likely but he is such an extraordinary grappler Nothing would surprise me at this point from Rustam. And what he did there was so subtle. He was against the cage, could feel the forward pressure of Abu Supian, and then just slowly, slowly, incrementally circled off into the open arena of the map. Very, very smart. Technically, this is a beautiful fight. Great work from Ali Khanov to get back to the feet. Three minutes or so to go in the third and final round. If you are a fan of mixed martial arts, you are a fan of this fight, you are a fan of both these men. Once again, I want to extend my, my deepest respect for and appreciation for the conditioning that these Russian fighters show. Mm. Being stuck under a double like that, having your head stuffed for 45 seconds or so, and then popping right up, showing everything you got, is yet another testament to the extraordinary conditioning of these athletes. Now it's Alkhanov who's putting the pressure on. Shiziev has him forced against the cage. Midway point of the third and final round. Referee calling for a little bit of action. Shiziev doing a really nice job here of moving just a little bit, seeing where the fighter's feet follow, and then looking to try and set up a foot sweep. It is one of his signature moves. Referee wants some room, wants to see a little more action. Both these guys showing they have a fantastic gas tank too. Nice little slip there from Rustam. I don't want to see Rustam throw that left body kick again. He's gotten countered two, three times in a row with an inside low kick off it. Oh, nicely checked. You heard that, that thump. Was. That was bone on small bone. Now, you know when you hear that dull thud instead of a slap that it hurt. Brave Nation, it may not come through on the television, but there, there's a oh, standing Kimura. Bone, bone makes. Standing Kimura attempt here, but this could parlay into a huge takedown. This is incredibly tense here. Don't want to see any more of those kicks. Want to see head movement and hands from Rustam. Does carry the hands a little bit low. Sure is exciting and it does draw his opponent's end. It's also very, very dangerous. Trying to land that big left. Again, all oh, that defense from Chesiev is so incredible. Phenomenal D, incredible range of motion. And again, and legs, those hips are made of uranium. That sprawl is as good of a strike, is as good as a strike because it forces your opponent's head into the mat. Thirty seconds to go. Can Rustam Chiziev make the claim to be the number one contender in the middleweight division? Or can, can Abu Supian Ali Kano steal the momentum of the Russian bear and announce himself as a threat on the global stage? In all honesty, one huge shot could do it. One takedown could do it. 
Gentlemen, that was right in front of us here in our broadcast position. It was like watching Jaws in 3D. They just came right at us. What a fight. Incredible fight from both men. And your final judge scores about 30-29 for your winner. Out of the blue corner, Abu Supian Alejandro! Here we go, Brave Nation. This next battle is three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 13 wins and three losses. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs already 84.3 kilograms. Representing Universal Fighters and fighting out of Russia, Put your hands together for Abu Supyan Alekano! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This fan is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of seven wins and two losses and one no contest. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 83.9 kilograms. Representing Mustang Athletic Team and fighting out of Bumshella, South Africa. Please welcome M'Zwandile Snakebone Halangwa. Your referee is the bandit, Decky Larkin. A real interesting clash of styles, and during the intro, I said stylistically, this is a very difficult matchup for Zwandile Longwa. Brave Nation, this fight is going to come down to one simple thing. Can Zwandile Longwa avoid the wrestling? And you can see it's going to be all about the movement for Zwandile. We know how dangerous he is on the feet, but he is, if there is a chink in the armor, if there is a weakness, it is the wrestling. But in mixed martial arts, Carrick, every fight does start standing. Zwandile shifting a little bit from a orthodox stance to a southpaw, trying to give his opponent different looks, circling constantly, constantly feinting. Thus far, very good strategy. Now, one of Zwandile's most dangerous weapons is his spinning attacks, but does he risk that and in doing so potentially give up the back to Abu Supyan? That's the danger. Abu Supyan, of course, is the number one ranked middleweight in a Brave Combat Federation. Oh, huge one too from Zwandile Longwa. We may see that wrestling attempt sooner rather than later from Abu Supyan. Zwandile needs to stay on the bike. Big overhand from Abu Supyan Alekhanov. Another key Brave Nation for Zwandile Longwa is to keep his back at least about a meter from that fence. If he gets his back up against the fence, in all likelihood, he's gonna get dropped. Tentative action right now. Swan Dile, again, staying on the bike, constant lateral movement. Be within his best interest to keep himself within that smaller circle, not get himself pressured up against the cage. And 
but there always seems like a stark inevitability with Ali Kanov when it comes to the grappling. If he initiates the clinch, it could be very dangerous. There's a big takedown. And this is not where Zwandile Longwa wanted to find himself. Textbook, beautiful timing from Abu Sufyan Ali Khanov. Finding himself now just in that half guard position. Gonna be happy just to frame off maybe. Some little petty pad elbows. Frame off, there's the elbow. And right now it is exactly where Abu Sufyan Ali Khanov wants the fight to be. If the ground is deep water, then Alejanov is unquestionably a shark. We know Mzwandile Slongwa has been working on his stand-ups. He's trying to get it. He's starting to get up, maybe moving to full guard. Move to full guard. This is a very good move for him. Does have that one <laughs> hook in. Back to half. This is less good. Half mountain mixed martial arts, uh, excuse me, half garden mixed martial arts is being half mounted. And it's something we see a lot more in mixed martial arts. Fighters happy to be in what we often call that anchor position. And just sit there, do enough work with the shots to, to stay dominant and force their opponent to exert energy by trying to get up. And if anything, this one delay long was last fight against NJ La really did provide the blueprint for a grappler on how to take on the dangerous striker. Prof to Slongwa, he actually threw a elbow to the thigh of his opponent. Jan there, that's what I was expecting. Alekhanov trying to pass the guard. And you see just how calm Abu Supian Alekhanov is in these positions. No wasted energy. Solidifies the position, throws when necessary, doesn't rush his work, doesn't crowd his work. Very workmanlike, very methodical. This is his home. Longwa trying to get back now to some form of full guard. In 2021, Abu Supian won the Tartazan President Sambo Cup in Kazan, one of the most prestigious tournaments in World Sambo. That coupled with his World Cup Combat Sambo Championship win make him one of the best in the world at the discipline. And so far, if Snakebone is bringing the poison, bringing the venom, then Alekhanov has the antidote. This is not where Swandile Longwell wants to find himself. He's trying there to get he up. Is. Just at the end of the round. Back up to standing. That may not have been enough. Oh, he hurt him there. Very wow. exciting. Very, very exciting ending to round one. Swandile has shown just how dangerous the striking is. He landed a beautiful one two early in the round, but as soon as Alekhanov got the big takedown, that was exactly where he wanted to be. And Kerrick, I think it's not gonna be uh, any secret or surprise how this fight is gonna unfold. Zwandile gonna be on the bike, constant movement, trying to land the shots. Alekhanov closing the distance, trying to score that big takedown. Phil, Zwandile has a very tough psychological problem to deal with right now. He's going to be able to land from the outside, as we've yeah. seen. When you land from the outside, as a fighter, what do you want to do? You want to follow up. All your instinct, all your training says, when you land one, throw two. When you land, throw. When you land two, throw three. That's what your body is forcing you to do, but he can't do it. He cannot set down and throw a big combination, or he'll end up on his back again. So does this have the potential to make Swan Dile Longwa somewhat gun-shy in his striking? I don't think he's gonna be so much gun shy as he wants to stay in the outside. He wants to throw, the, look at him shift again. He wants to throw single shots from the outside. He does not want to set down and throw a two punch combination. He's just trying to find the range. You can see the constant switches and movement, switching stances. Doesn't want to be static for any length of time to leave himself vulnerable to the takedown from Alekhanov. He's fainting the kicks a little bit. He's trying to set up that big straight hand. 
So far, no spinning attacks from Hlongwe, keeping it all right down the middle. Very strategic so far. Phone was back a little bit too close to the fence right there. there. And you saw the result. There's the big takedown. And once again, that stark inevitability with regards to the grappling of our number one ranked middleweight, Abu Subian Alikanov. There is another inevitability, though, and that is that Zwandili Flongwa is going to bide his time a little bit, and he's going to try and stand. With his back up against the fence, that stand-up may actually be easier than it was out on the mat. As he's trying to wrap up the legs. It's a dangerous position to be in. He's trying to post, trying to get about how smart is Alakanov there, just grabs the wrist and takes away that post. Very slick technique from Abusupian, took away the elbow, popped the knee back a little bit, and he is very comfortably up on top. We're gonna expect to see elbows coming down very, very shortly. Right there it was. Three and a half minutes with which to work here. And yes, this may be Abu Subian Alakanov's second fight in Brave Combat Federation. You may be wondering why he's ranked number one, but to defeat Rustam Shazayev in the manner in which he did warrants such an accolade. Alikhanov too has a problem right now, Phil. If he is, stays comfortably on top, he's not going to have enough distance to land hard shots. If mm. he doesn't land any hard shots, there's going to be a stand-up. So he's got a little bit of a, a balancing act to do right here. He wants to stay busy enough, land significant shots enough that the referee allows him to stay down. But in order to do that, he's got to posture back a little bit to throw those big shots, and that gives his opponent an opportunity to pop up to standing. It's not risk versus reward conundrum, isn't it, Kerrick? You can see he's framing off well. He's making life constantly uncomfortable for his one delay, so he can't settle. He can't find himself in the space to get his back off the cage and get up. Oh, his one did great huge job. Huge moment. That is huge in the fight, as you said, Kirik. But you wonder how much being on the bottom has taken out of one delay. A moral victory, unquestionably. If he can work a little bit of striking and pull back a little bit more of this round. He's got hammers for hands, rocks in those, inside those gloves. But he cannot be stationary like he is right now. He's got to get back on that bicycle a little bit. There he goes, starting to faint, fainting a takedown, fainting those kicks, faint the hands, and then try and land that big straight. Yeah, we saw a Brave 31 and Brave 44, respectively, when he beat Jeremy Smith and Dom Schober in fights where he used every little bit of his striking to get the job done, especially the fight with Dom Schrober, an absolute war in November of 2020 right here in Bahrain. And there is the danger with those spinning attacks. We alluded to that. It leaves yourself vulnerable to the takedown. I think, though, Phil, he's got a little bit more confidence now in his ability to stand up. I think he's felt his opponent's attack from top. He thinks he can weather it and he thinks he can get it back up to standing. So what's he doing for the fans? He's looking for that high, light, real knockout. Didn't get it this time, but I, I'm pretty sure he's gonna try at least one more time. And that speaks to the confidence of somebody who is a supremely dangerous striker. Nice elbow over the top from Alekhanov, burying his head into the chest. That was one delayed long one, making it uncomfortable. 30 seconds now, Brave Nation. Just acting like a fire blanket to extinguish the flames of Maz Wandile Longwa. Nice shoulder pressure there. Wandile has enough time to have a little shake of his mouthpiece. Final 10 seconds of the second round. And Kirik. It has to be said, from his last fight against NJ Lat, there have been improvements in his ability to stand back up, but two rounds in, are those improvements enough? Two rounds in, Phil, he is down 20 to 18. In mm. order to win this fight, he needs to stop his opponent. He's not known as a submission specialist. We all know what this man can do, and that's knock people out. He's got one of the most viral knockouts 
in combat sports history. Yep. From that aforementioned spinning uh, spinning hammer fist, spinning elbow, he's going to try and do it one more time, and it's what he needs to do. His bread and butter, however, is that straight right hand. He's going to start this round fainting again. We just need to see him circle a little bit more, not let his back get anywhere close to that fence. If it gets closer than a meter to that fence, or... Wondele trying to land that big straight again. He's got to be careful stalking. He can't move forward constantly trying to land that straight. Because that forward momentum could lead him right into being taken down. Abu Sipi and Alikanov showing that he's no slouch when it comes to the dynamic striking either. Giving Zwandile lots to think about. You can see there's almost a little bit of, of tentativeness with Zwandile now. He doesn't want to overcommit to the strikes. Doesn't want Abu Sipi and Alikanov to close that distance and get in within grabbing distance. Abu Sufyan showing some very impressive kicks. Beautiful tornado kick, beautiful side kick. Zwandili needs to get his back off against the cage, and that's what happens when he overcommits to the strikes. Another big takedown. The timing on the takedowns, the intelligence of the takedowns is what has been so impressive from Abu Sufyan Alekhanov. Brave Nation, the timing it takes to do the double leg that you saw right there, at most, maybe two one hundredths of a second off and it will not work. It, it, it's, it's a supremely high level of technique that allows him to get in there without being struck, almost makes it look easy. There's one delay trying to do damage from the bottom. Passing violently into side control is Alekhanov. First time we've seen a Musupian in top side control fully. Switching just momentarily to almost scarf position and right back into side control. And look at the lack of space he is giving Zwan Dile. No space between the hips. He's keeping his left hip completely pinned against the right hip of Zwan Dile. Could be trying to switch into crucifix position here. He's trying to isolate that wrist. Trying to take that knee, work it inside the near arm, and then pin the arm. There's potential for knee on belly here and into mount if he wants it. Distract with the arm and switch into mount. Oh, there it is. Crucifix position, but can Zwandile get out? Trying to roll Alekhanov. Zwandile out of sight control. Did a good job to reclaim guard, but right now he needs to get back to the feet and throw the kitchen sink at Abu Supyan. Again, just constant methodical workmanlike performance from Alekhanov has a job to do, doing it with such proficiency. Methodical and workmanlike perhaps, but he's getting smarter and smarter. He's learning what Zwandide Flongwa does in order to stand up, and he's thwarting it almost before it happens. Has enough time to throw a little thumbs up to his corner. trying to get up but when you're in that open forum of the mat pretty much in the center of the brave arena it becomes so much more difficult Kirik. Abu Supian turning it up a little bit more with the strikes. Abu Supian maybe trying to set up a submission here. Posturing back a little bit switching the angles. The hip positioning each time from Alekhanov is fantastic leaving so little space and even just framing off against the throat to make things uncomfortable. It's all these little nuanced pieces of grappling that only somebody who's so experienced and, and as capable as Alekhanov can execute so well. 
30 seconds to go and and barring something spectacular from Zwandile. We could be looking at a shot right here, Kirik. Brave Nation, you are watching why the man in front of you on top is the number one ranked contender in Brave Combat Federation globally. There you have it. Wonderfully dominant performance. Judges scorecard. Two judges score the bout 30 27, and what judge scores about 29 28 for unanimous decision victory? Out of the blue corner, Abu Supian Ale! <laughs>